We will continue in English this part because I have now the pleasure to welcome two cloud experts from Microsoft Corporation. First of all, Alisa Taylor, Corporate Vice President, Commercial Cloud and AI. Welcome, Alisa. Well, thank you. And Corey Sanders, uh, sorry, <laughs> Commercial Vice President, Microsoft uh, for Industry. Welcome, Corey. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. We are celebrating the general availability of our first cloud region in Spain. Uh, Alisa, let me start with you. Can you help us uh, put this in the context of the global uh, infrastructure that Microsoft has? Absolutely, and we are so pleased to have this uh, Spanish data center coming to this region. And as we think about the opportunity that it presents, it is incredibly important for us to continue to invest in our customers' digital foundation. We've talked a lot about the opportunity for AI and being able to have customers have access to the latest AI infrastructure, being able to bring their data together in a cloud-based environment, having AI reason over that data, having access to the latest and greatest models, over 1,800 proprietary third-party and open-source models, all of that is establishing the digital foundation for our customers. Um, and so I think that's you know, a very, very important aspect of our investment. The second area is bringing increased security as well as data residency and performance and price to the region. And then the last area I would say, which is probably the most exciting, is the ability to actually um, uplift the macro environment. And so we know when we have invested in data centers in Italy and Poland and Mexico, it's brought in tens of thousands of jobs, as well as an overall uplift in the macroeconomics. Exciting times. Very exciting, yeah. Indeed. And uh, Corey, uh, with you here, I wanted to ask you about the context of data residency and how this uh, local cloud infrastructure can help us and help our customers address the needs. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, uh, you know, to build on the point uh, from Melissa that the scale of what we're talking about here is just gigantic. I mean, just what's being built, uh, billions of euros being spent, uh, I think 77,000 jobs being created. Uh, it's just a massive undertaking to, to, to bring one of these regions here. And it's really exciting. Uh, to, I'm honored to be able to be here for the, for the announcement here today. Um, it, it also brings it in a connected way to the rest of our infrastructure. Uh, and so the infrastructure being available globally uh, and then obviously being able to deploy your solutions here locally uh, but connected in such a way that you can take advantage of those global capabilities and uh, the 280,000 uh, kilometers of fiber just to give you a sense of what that number means it means you could wrap the earth seven times uh, with the amount of fiber that we've got deployed around the world and so that's the interconnectedness that's being brought here um, but then to deploy the apps, I mean, the real benefit, of course, is that residency, to be able to deploy your solutions from an infrastructure to the, to the higher level um, uh, services uh, right here in Spain. Uh, and so uh, this massive deployment, these multiple data centers that are coming together to give you high availability um, uh, while still allowing you to meet uh, whatever regulations you may, may require um, uh, is really going to enable a lot of really amazing solutions that I'm excited to see you all build. Wonderful. Alisa, you've been around the world announcing investments in AI infrastructure, and I wanted to pick your brain on some of the you know, most uh, immediate opportunities that you can think of for Spanish customers uh, leveraging AI in this era. We see some pretty incredible opportunities that are emerging um, across the world and here in Spain. There's four that we see universal. My mic's still going, there we go. Um, the first is really around the employee. Uh-oh. Suspense. I know, right. there we go. <laughs> the employee experience, let's see if we move it up, if that's gonna help. Um, the employee experience. And the, the reality is that today, almost half of employees in an organization are facing burnout and being unable to keep up with the pace. And this is... <laughs> I don't know if we're having problems with the mic. I can just repeat everything you say. Yeah. Is that what? <laughs> I can sign it to you. That's right. Uh, let's start over. So the employee. All right. We give up. We're going to give up on this. Hold on one second. That was not how I was going to go into it. 
I don't think this is running on, on Azure, so just <laughs> unrelated, good unrelated. Good yes, it is not. We do not power headsets. We do not power headsets. Uh, so <laughs> let's try that again. So the opportunities that we see, um, particularly in employee experience. So as I was saying, half of the employees today in within organizations are facing burnout. They're struggling to keep up with the pace. And so really what AI does is it is enabling productivity, which has been flat for decades, but it's also bringing creativity back to individuals in their functions and in their roles. And there's a great example of Indara here in Spain mm -hmm. that has deployed GitHub Copilot mm -hmm. for their developers. And they were able to take out 30% of the redundant code that developers were coding on a daily basis. And the inverse of that is that 20% of those developers felt more satisfied with their day-to-day -day environment. And so that's a great example of where you are seeing productivity coupled with actually bringing sort of satisfaction back to a job. Um, the second is in the customer experience. And we know right now how important it is for organizations to meet customers where they are and what they need. And we see an increase need for personalization. In fact, 71% of consumers today expect a personalized experience from the organizations that serve them. And we see La Liga here, again, in Spain, um, just doing a phenomenal example of that, being able to bring their matches to their 2.8 global fans on a near real-time basis. And so that's actually meeting the needs of their customers and actually doing it in a highly personal way. The third area is on the operational side, and I think we all know as leaders how important it is to optimize operations. And it's really important to be able to improve workflows, business processes. And so we see organizations like Technus Reunitis that's being able to really um, use AI to improve on-site uh, within their construction facilities and in their on-site environments, improving workflows, overall health and safety. And then the last uh, area is bending the innovation curve. And Brad talked about it in his video, but it's being able to really create new lines of business. New, we see things like chemical and material discovery, drug discovery, and organizations standing up entire AI centers of excellence to be able to not only understand the new applications of AI, but then also the benefits of AI. And I had the pleasure of having Group Media Pro at the keynote earlier talk about how their AI center of excellence has helped improve translation by 70%. 70%. So, and that is something that is so important to all of us to be able to have real time translation and to see the efficiencies that AI is bringing to bear. So, those are really the four areas that we see, like I said, universally. And then when you, you know, look at individual industries, it gets even more impactful healthcare and being able to combat physician burnout. So, these are really unique opportunities that AI is presenting for us. Wonderful. Actually, talking about industries, I'm yes. sure you can build on that uh, given to. your responsibilities. Yeah. So take it yeah, over. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, I think the um, uh, you know, as Alice talked about, the the usage case by industry uh, is just fascinating and exciting to see. Um, every industry has their own challenges, their own problems, right? Their own things they're trying to solve for either their end customer or for their employees. Uh, and just seeing some of these um, some of these scenarios come to life with AI um, is probably the highlight of my job. Um, and seeing all the amazing work folks like you are doing. Uh, some good examples, uh, Spar Retail uh, built an AI solution focused on demand forecasting. Obviously, for, for retail, demand forecasting is a critical challenge uh, to being able to dr drive their, their overall uh, margin. And they were able to build this solution. It improved their demand forecasting, 90% forecast accuracy uh, using this AI solution that they built. Uh, in a similar, but a very, I guess, very different way, actually, uh, Lucerne Hospital uh, has built a solution uh, that helps with nurse scheduling. Uh, they have thousands of nurses, uh, and scheduling is incredibly difficult when you take into account uh, preference and, and sort of specific needs. There's regulations involved around how you schedule and how many need to be on staff in any given moment. Um, 
And so with an AI-based solution, they have now taken the work out of the, the managers who would be spending days per month scheduling and organizing the calendar uh, into just a direct application that the nurses just get to uh, pr uh, ask for their time and the system goes and finds the right and nearest best time, uh, saving lots and lots of time so those nurses can go back and help the patients. Um, and then the, the last example, uh, building a little bit on La Liga, um, uh, is the example that they've built using AI with cameras that they've set up inside their stadiums uh, and to be able to uh, track you know, this, how, how hard uh, the players are kicking, the speed of the ball, uh, the coaches, referees, etc. to create an application they called Media Coach that allows the coaches to be able to uh, guide and give feedback to the team. Uh, which I think is a really, really cool scenario. I will admit, I don't know if I would want my manager uh, with cameras around me giving me <laughs> feedback all day, but uh, it is a very, very cool solution for, uh, for, for helping the teams get better and get smarter. And so just a few examples of the amazing Thank you, Corey. Work. Great examples. And one last question, because we've been talking about responsible AI for years, and I wanted to take the opportunity to ask you, Alisa, to unpack the Microsoft approach to responsible AI in your experience. Yes, thank you. And so very important that we are thinking about these AI solutions in a responsible manner. And as you talked about, this is we've been talking about it for years. Uh, 2018 was when we first published the six principles around responsible AI. And we have used them to guide our own internal development at Microsoft around the responsible use of AI. And then we've published them to our customers, to all of you, to our partners, um, so that we are co-innovating together responsibly. And these these are principles spanning everything from security, fair, fairness, transparency. We have them here up on the slide so you can read them all. Um, so it starts with the principles. But we also have been um, releasing to market new services to help customers actually build and deploy responsible AI solutions. So services like Azure Content Safety, which can be used with the Azure services or as a standalone API. It actually helps to uh, detect and mitigate biases within the models, but can also interject malicious prompt as well, prompt injections. And so that service is really helping at the build level when you're building new AI solutions um, to both detect and mitigate as well as interject malicious prompts. And then lastly, what I would say is um, our customer copyright commitment. And this is very unique in the industry. We actually expanded this last fall to cover any customer that is using a Microsoft Copilot service or Azure AI service that we will indemnify our customers against any copyright infringement. And so those three, the principles, the services that we're bringing to market, as well as our copyright, customer copyright commitment, make up the entirety of our enterprise AI commitment and our responsible AI efforts. Crystal clear. Thank you so much, Elisa. Thank you, Corey. It's been a, an honor. Thank you.